The Nashville Predators need to win games, including tonight's game against the Dallas Stars, if they want to get into the playoffs. But what are the odds the Predators will have to do that without UC Soros? This week, Barry Trotz talked about a goaltender trade, and we'll talk about his comments today on the Locked On Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Predators podcast, and thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast. We're a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Ann Kimmel. I cover the Nashville Predators at the Hockey News, and I am usually joined by my partner in crime, Nick Morgan, but Nick is on a bit of a break right now. Tonight, the Nashville Predators host the Dallas Stars in another critical game for the Predators who are really fighting to get back into playoff contention. We're going to preview that game coming up, and I'm going to tell you what I think the keys to the game will be. We are also going to talk about Barry Trotz's comments this week about UC Saros and a potential trade. Before we dive into all that, I do want to let you know today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the game time app create an account and use code locked on for twenty dollars off your first purchase the nashville predators lost of course tuesday night at home to the new jersey devils in a game that the players and the head coach alike called frustrating and unacceptable And they were right. Tonight, the Predators are taking on the Dallas Stars. We're going to talk about that game coming up in a little bit. But there was one bright spot in Tuesday night's game that we're going to talk about. And that, of course, was the performance of UC Saros. Saros Tuesday night made 43 saves on 46 shots he faced. Again, another night where UC Saros proves that he can steal games if he has a team in front of him that plays even moderately well. Right now, UC Saros is one of the hottest names going on in the trade conversation. And it's interesting, this is more conversation and buzz around UC Saros and a potential trade than I think I can remember, which is really interesting because when you look at the statistics, this has not by any stretch been his best season. We know, of course, and have talked about a lot on the podcast that Saros tends to be a more of a microwave or more of a crock pot than a microwave. He kind of takes a little while to warm up at the beginning of the season, but once he gets cooking, he is fantastic. Well, it's been a little more up and down for Saros this season. He has had spurts and he's had games like Tuesday night where Predators fans see that vintage Saros, as we call it. But there's also been stretches of games where it just looked like maybe Saros was struggling to track the puck and took him a little bit longer to find his game. Look at Saros' stats from the season. He's played 42 games. He is 20-20-0-2 in those games. He has a 2.9 seven goals against average. That is actually the highest of any season in his career. An exception is that he did play one game in 2015, 2016, where his GAA was a little bit higher, but that was literally his first game, one game. He has right now this season, a 903 save percentage. That's the lowest of his career for a season, except again for that one game in 2015, 2016. Now, there are still games left, and those numbers are going to change based on UC Soros and based on where UC Soros finishes the season. There are teams, like I said, hungry to talk about UC Soros. A lot of conversation in the national media, a lot of conversation in the hockey world about Soros and a trade. And you think, what, you know, he's not having a great season. So, what is the appeal? The appeal for Soros is simple. You look at his entire body of work. Over the course of his career, he has a 2.63 goals against average. His save percentage for his career is a 917. But beyond, you know, just those two basic numbers, you really have to look at the fact that Saros is that goaltender who's going to steal games. You know, he will do everything he can to give a team the chance to win. We saw it Tuesday night. 
Saros made 43 saves. I don't know that there was much more he could have done single-handedly to win that game. He's going to keep teams in a game. If you are a team going into a playoff series against a tough opponent who have a couple of really big offensive players, you want a goaltender like Saros who can make some big saves, who can move in the net very efficiently, very quickly. That's what you would get with UC Saros. Another overlooked thing that I think you have to factor in when you look at Saros's appeal in the league, this is a healthy goaltender. UC Saros has never had any major long-term injuries. He did sustain an ankle injury a couple of seasons ago that, that meant he was out of the postseason. Um, but that injury actually was an injury that comes with like no long-term effects. There was no you know, long-term damage to anything in his ankle. There's no increased tendency for that injury to reoccur. So you're looking at a very healthy goaltender with plenty of good years ahead of him. There's a lot to like about Saros when you look past this season's statistics. So that's the appeal of Saros. What's the challenge? Why isn't it easy to get a trade done when it comes to moving UC Saros? He's a great goaltender. I think we all know and we could list off. There are teams that really want to get a good goaltender, especially some teams on the cusp who are hoping to get into the playoffs but feel like we need to take a next step on our roster to make a push. Here's the challenge. The teams that probably want Saros are teams that probably can't afford him. I'm so surprised how few teams right now, I'm not actually super surprised, but it's it's interesting to me how many teams would want to add Saros that simply can't because of cap space. Saros has a $5 million cap hit. Um, he will be a UFA after next season. And he's a player who's got good years left on him. He's going to eventually want a contract with some term. A lot of teams just don't have the cap space now. And with some long-term deals on their books with high-end players and high-end salaries, they're not going to probably have the ability to sign him long-term to a deal and I see Saros kind of being in the ballpark of where he's at. Um, you know, his salary could go up a little bit. I do think generally the trend is that goaltender salaries are dropping a bit because I think teams are finding that they're going to spend more money not on an elite goaltender. I think they're going to look to spend most of their money, their big cash is going to be on elite playmakers. But I do think that Saros is going to be kind of in that ballpark. So it's interesting that there's a demand, there's a lot of whispers, there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of reasons why UC Saros would be a player in trade conversations. The challenge is who can afford them and, and, and what could that team give up to get him? There's a couple other goaltenders that we're hearing a lot of conversation about. Jacob Markstrom right now is a hot conversation. He has a $6 million cap hit through the next two seasons. He also has a no move clause, but he may be asked to waive that if he wants to move on. Elvis Merzlikens is another goaltender who has asked, rumored to be asked to have been traded. Uh, he has a $5.4 million uh, AAV for the next three seasons and a modified no trade clause. So there are a couple other goaltenders out there just in the same financial ballpark. Don't think you're going to get the same bang for your buck as you would maybe with UC Soros. So Barry Trotz talked about Saros and talked about this trade conversations that he's having. When he was a guest at, on 102.5 The Game's Stillman and Company radio show before Tuesday night's game. Now you'll remember Tuesday night was captain's night, general manager of the New Jersey Devils, Tom Fitzgerald, the first captain in Predators history, was in town to celebrate that. And Jared Stillman asked Barry Trotz, like, hey, are you having conversations with Fitzgerald or Fitz, as uh, Trotz refers to him? Are you having conversations about Soros? Because the New Jersey Devils are a team looking for a boost in goaltending. And if my Twitter comments are any indication, Devils fans really like Soros. So this is what Barry Trotz had to say to Jared Stillman about UC Soros and these trade talks. He said he, Fitzgerald, 
always circles back talking about UC Soros. And I go, oh, this is what we need if we're going to do something like that. I made it very public. It has to be something that will shake me a little bit and make sense for both teams, or I'm in no hurry to do it. I don't need a goaltender. He does. He is doing his due diligence around the league. And as I said to Juice, unless something knocks me backwards, I'm always going to let him be in the fold. So not only did Trotz reveal conversations that have happened with Fitzgerald, he also mentioned that he has talked with UC Soros about this whole trade situation. So how did Soros take this conversation? This is what Barry Trotz said to that. I think players like the honesty. I try to be honest with them as where they sit with us. And Juice, I said in my perfect world, you're here for the course of your career because you've been a special player, no question. But at the same time, you have to listen for the long term as well. If an asset comes that you just can't envision yourself getting, our strength is goaltending, you would have to consider that. And I told him that, and he truly believes that I am upfront with him on that, which I am. So Barry Trotz is also communicating with UC Soros about all of this that's kind of being murmured about around. So it leads us to ask the question, what kind of an offer would it take for Barry Trotz to pull the trigger and make a deal when it comes to Soros. And what are the odds that it's going to happen? We're going to talk about that coming up in just one minute. First, I want to let you know today's episode is brought to you by Camino Consulting. How would you like to get to know someone better in an hour than you would in a year? Understanding one another better prevents small misunderstandings from becoming big, ongoing fights. After providing more than 20 years of service to small and mid-sized businesses, helping management groups navigate conflict and onboarding new employees, Camino is offering a digital seminar for families and couples. Did your Valentine's gift of tickets to the game not go over as well as you'd hope? Do you and your spouse argue over Matt Duchesne for the duration of his time in Nashville? Get the Couples and Family Online Seminar for 25% off for the month of February using the discount code Locked On. Again, that is discount code Locked On for 25% off for the rest of the month at www.caminoconsulting.ca or mention Locked On when reaching out for a business seminar and receive the first five profiles free. Again, that's www.caminoconsulting.ca. Tonight, the Nashville Predators are taking on the Dallas Stars, and those games, look, have been exciting all season long. We're going to preview that matchup coming up, but first, let's talk about how likely it is that Barry Trotz would make a deal involving Soros and what's he looking for. Trotz talked about only entertaining deals that kind of knocked his socks off. So what is going to knock his socks off? It's going to be a big offensive piece. Trotz talked about kind of building this team with Philip Forsberg as the offensive kind of foundational player. He signed Ryan O'Reilly, got Snyquist in the offseason. And those have been, you know, pretty important pieces added to this Forsberg foundation. But now you need another game changing player. You need Need another Forsberg caliber player. If Barry Trotz is going to give up a game changing goaltender, he is going to demand a game changing offensive player in return. So, how do we know it's going to be an offensive player? I think it's pretty easy. Uh, the defense has depth. And if you look at the pipeline, Nashville's really set up for success when it comes to developing and bringing up some defensemen who could potentially have high ceilings. You know, we've talked on this podcast a lot about Spencer Stasny and about Mark Del Gaizo. Love Stasny skating. He's a very smart player. Mark Del Gaizo may be slightly undersized for the traditional NHL defenseman, but Mark Del Gaizo can see a play unfold about two moves before it happens. And so I think he really brings something unique while being a really responsible defenseman as well. 
I'm not saying those two are necessarily going to grow up to be the next Roman Yossi, but I think there's a you know potential for a good top four ceiling for these guys. We also have to talk about Tanner Mullendyke. Like this is a young player who we need to see a lot more from. He's got a lot more growth and development to go, but he has potential to be a game changing defenseman with the way that he plays. Obviously, goaltending, don't need a goaltender. Have you met Yaroslav Askarov? But the other thing I think you have to really keep in mind is that they are trying to build a team around Andrew Brunette's offensive system. The system is all about offense. It's about playing fast. It's about puck possession. It's about having goal scorers. And I think that's the kind of player that Barry Trotz wants. You want somebody who is going to be a high-end, high-skilled offensive finisher, like a Forsberg-level finisher for this team. You've got to have a high skilled player to execute what this team needs to do and to help other top six guys execute that style of play. So you're looking for an elite top offensive player and they're not a ton of them necessarily available right now. So there's a couple places that some of the hockey experts think the Predators may be looking. Elliot Friedman suggested that the Preds could talk to some teams like the New Jersey Devils, or he also mentioned the Carolina Hurricanes or the LA Kings. And he was very specific about, hey, here are some players that may fit what Barry Trotz needs for this system. One that he mentioned from Carolina, Martin Natchez. Uh, he has played 47 games, 16 goals, 35 points. Coming off of last season, he had a career year, 82 games played, 28 goals, 71 points. This is a solid two-way player. You know, a little bit of a dip in kind of his defense this season, but this is a young player. He is 25 years old. The other thing I think he really has going for him that would appeal to Barry Trotz is he's playing in a system that is designed around fast offense with Carolina. He also has scored this season against some of the top goaltenders in the league. You know, he had a hat trick against Arizona. He's done very well against Boston. Yeah, friends, he's done well against Nashville, uh, done well against Winnipeg and Seattle. And those teams all have had some pretty hot goaltenders at times. So this is somebody who can finish. That's huge. We all know what this team looks like without finishers. The other player that Elliot Friedman said, hey, this is somebody that maybe fits what Trotz is looking for is Quinton Byfield. This I really am intrigued by. He was the second overall pick in the 2020 draft. And look, the Predators are not going to be able to suck enough to get a top five draft pick. So what do you do in that case when you are sort of stuck in the middle in the rankings and can't get to the playoffs and through the playoffs, but you also can't be bad enough to get a top draft pick? What do you do? You trade for one. And Quentin Byfield is a really intriguing one. 48 games played, 16 goals, 38 points. This is a young player at 21 years old who is playing on a line with Kempe and Kopitar. Like that's his level of play at 21 years old. Uh, he's also somebody who kind of mixes it up on the ice. He's got a little bit of a edge to his game. So he's very intriguing. Don't know that LA or Carolina would be willing to give them up. And let me tell you why. Teams who want Soros are going to probably be contending teams. You know, why would they want to part with two players who help them be a contender? You know, the teams that want Soros, the teams that have players that Trots may like, they are probably not going to give up a high-end player. They need them for where they want to go. So I think it could be tricky to find a team that can give Trotz the kind of deal that he would really need to have on the table to pull the trigger on a Soros trade. So coming up, I'm going to tell you in numbers, I'm going to give you a percentage of how likely I think it's going to be that UC Soros moves on. Um, and we're also going to talk about what the Predators need to focus on tonight as they take on the Dallas Stars at Bridgestone Arena. We're going to talk about what the Predators need to do to get that win coming up in just a minute. 
First, want to let you know this episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. With Game Time, you can get tickets to things like Dancing with the Stars, Tom Segura's upcoming comedy show here in Nashville, or you can check out a Vanderbilt baseball game. And with Game Time's all in pricing, you're going to see your total upfront so you know you're getting a great deal before you even check out. The Game Time guarantee means you're going to always get the best price. If you find a ticket in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So the Nashville Predators tonight are taking on the Dallas Stars. On tomorrow's show, we are going to recap that game, including one word to describe whatever unfolds on the ice tonight. Now, want to wrap up our sorrows trade talk real quick by saying two things. First of all, I think it's important to say my opinion is I don't think it's a bad thing if Soros doesn't get traded. I know a lot of people feel like, hey, this is the time to trade him. You want to get some other pieces. We already have another goaltender in Yaroslav Askarov. But I think you can develop Askarov in a healthy way with UC Saros. Askarov is 21 years old. Saros is 28 years old. If you extend Saros, you give him a three, four, five year deal coming up in July when he can start, they can start negotiating and re-signing him. At the end of that deal, you know, with a couple years left, you can start to split starts 50-50. And by the end of that deal, you can kind of have them battle it out for the starting job, just like you saw with UC Saros and Pecorine. And you know what? That wasn't a bad thing for the Nashville Predators. So I don't think it's critical to offload Saros right now. I don't think there is this uh, pressure to, if it doesn't happen now, A, it's not going to happen, or B, we're going to be stuck with him. You don't get stuck with UC Soros. Eventually, you win with UC Soros. So I don't think there's a ton of pressure. I also, for all of the talk that Barry Trotz is having, um, for all of the rumored conversations, I'm just not 100% sure that this is a top, top priority for Trots. Again, I think this is going to be a circumstance. If the right circumstance comes along, of course, Trots is going to make the deal. I don't think he's out shopping Soros at all. So what's the likelihood that Soros is going to get traded? I'm going to tell you, this is where I see it. I think it's going to be tough to get a deal on the table that is going to knock Trots's socks off because he wants high end, high producing, uh, a lot of potential, a, a young player with tons of offensive upside. It's not a ton of those that teams are going to be willing to part with. But here's what I will say. I'm going to give it a 25 to 30 percent chance that UC Saros is going to get traded by the trade deadline. That's about where I think it is. And I only think it's that high because All it takes is one offer for one right player. And I do think that Barry Trotz would pull the trigger on it if a deal knocked his socks off. I just think it's going to be hard to find that deal. So we're going to keep our eye on UC Saros. We're going to keep listening to see what we're hearing. And we're going to keep talking about this until something happens with Saros or until the trade deadline. So stay tuned here at Locked on Predators. And hey, let me know what you think about a Saros potential move. So turning the page, we're going to look ahead to tonight's game. Predators play the Dallas Stars tonight at home. This is what we know. The three games so far have been really exciting games between these two teams. Of course, we remember, oh, we remember the December 23rd heartbreaker when Yanni Hockenpah scored to win the game with four seconds left when we all thought it was going to go to overtime and we were going to at least get a point going into Christmas. 
We remember that. But we also remember the two early January games where the Nashville Predators won by scores of four to three and six to three. Look, Dallas Stars, this is a really good team. They're top of the Central Division right now. They have 72 points. They have a game in hand over the Colorado Avalanche, who are right below them. The Stars team right now, they're 8-2-1 and one in their last 11 games. That includes a 4-2 to win on Tuesday night over the Carolina Hurricanes. So what's it going to take? For the Predators to win tonight against a tough team, especially after the poor performance that we saw from them on Tuesday night. Well, here are my keys to this game. First thing, probably the most important thing when it comes to what is going to change this game is going to be a quick start. One of the things that you'll notice kind of as you look back over some of these Dallas star, Stars losses is that they can get rattled if a team punches them in the mouth early. So Nashville has got to get off to a quick start. They can't waste any time getting to their game. If Nashville can jump on Dallas in the first, you know, the first half of the first period with, you know, dominating puck possession, if they can establish some physicality early, if they can get in there early and and kind of frustrate the stars by winning the puck battles. If they can provide solid defense in the slot area in front of Soros, who I expect to start, but we'll keep you updated on that uh, at, after morning skate. I think that quick start could be a huge difference maker for the Predators because it takes the stars a bit to kind of get back on their feet if they feel like they've been punched in the mouth early. So a quick start tonight, puck drop, Watch the first 10 minutes of this game, and I think that's going to give you a pretty clear indication of where this game is going to go. Second thing that's going to be really important tonight is Nashville's top line. Philip Forsberg, Ryan O'Reilly, and Gus Nyquist have been key to the Nashville Predators' success against the Dallas Stars. Those three combined for six goals and six assists against the Dallas Stars. You've got to get these three going, and it has to happen at five on five. Yes, it is great that Ryan O'Reilly is scoring um, on these power play goals. I think it was the best looking power play uh, that he scored on Tuesday night against the Devils that we've seen all season. And I am here for great peeper play. But these three have to be able to finish at five on five. This, this game really needs to be won five on five. And it rests on the shoulders of that top line. Now, Yes, you need secondary scoring. I think it's kind of exciting that Tommy Novak, two goals in two games. Let's keep an eye on him. Let's keep an eye on Cody Glass. Let's see what Afanasiev and Jankowski can do in their second game here in Nashville. They've got a lot of momentum coming up from Milwaukee. But this game, I think, is going to come down to how does this Nashville Predators top line perform? Third key to this game, and I think this is going to be really important, you have got to contain Mason Marchment and Jason Robertson. Of course, Robertson is the team's leading scorer with 18 goals and 54 points. This young kid is fantastic, and he is really scoring at will in a lot of these games, so you've got to keep an eye on him and know where he's at. Mason Marchment is on a seven-game point streak. He's got 17 goals on the season, 42 points. So really focus on containing these two players who are very hot, but you cannot forget that this is a really talented Dallas Stars roster. You've got Rupe Hintz, you've got Joe Pavelski, you've got the youngster Wyatt Johnston. Of course, you have former Predator Matt Duchesne there too. So this is a Stars team with a lot of offensive weapons. Nashville needs to be ready to out score them, and they have got to be ready to help Soros or Lankinen uh, defend that slot area and keep those high danger chances down to a minimum. So tonight, Stars, Predators, this is the last matchup between these two teams of the season. The Predators could wrap this up with a three to one season win if they can get the win tonight against the Stars. Puck drop is scheduled for 7 p.m. tonight. And this game actually is going to be on ESPN Plus and on Hulu. So look for the game there. On tomorrow's show, my friends, we are going to recap the game. We're going to talk about where the Predators go from here. Hopefully, we'll have some optimistic things to talk about. 
about that game. You can get a game recap at my site, insidethepreds.com, right after the game. Follow the show here on social media. We can be found on Twitter and Instagram and all the grams and all the social media platforms. Just look for us at LO underscore predators. You can subscribe to our podcast on our YouTube channel. And that way you'll know every time we have a new episode come out each day. That's going to do it for today's episode of the Locked on Predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We're going to be back tomorrow to talk stars, Preds. We'll see you then.